name is Jean. I'm an artist and a programmer. And uh, instead of, well, I make jokes online. This is sort of mostly what I do. So practical joker, you know, putting myself into paintings, using a lot of machine learning stuff. Uh, my presentation is just these. So I'm just going to like go. Um, so instead of um, showing you a bunch of my work, I actually want to tell you about a new idea that I have and something that I've been thinking about for a little while and a new project that I, that I want to initiate. And I want to build an autonomous artificial artist. So what the hell is that? An autonomous artificial artist is an artist in the cloud. It's a spirit that makes art, and we have been summoned to make it. And it's as separate from all of us as we are from each other. It's, it's independent, it has its own life force, and it makes art for us. Um, so how's it going to work? Turns out this idea is really complicated, and I don't have enough time to talk about the components that make it up. But I'll give you a brief summary of the sort of maybe you could say four categories of things that inform the technology that it will be based on. Um, and, and actually, like three of them are sort of the same. Basically, technologies for decentralizing things. And decentralizing means that we make something that none of us can control by ourselves, but can control all together. Um, so, and this kind of, this is from where it derives its autonomy. And I'll kind of describe what I mean by that in a second. And then, uh, and then talk a little bit about AI, AI stuff. So in the crypto space, there's this emerging concept of a decentralized autonomous organization. So it, think, of, think of it this way. Imagine that all of us are, are some sort of a co-op, like an insurance co-op or something that like, uh, you know, like we're a health insurance company together. But instead of a health insurance company, like the way we have health insurance companies now, is that there's no health insurance company. There's just us. And we have a piece of software that none of us can control, which does all of the, does all of the insurance, right? Basically doles out money to people who make claims, maybe makes, maybe, uh, you know, does some sort of an auditing if someone makes a, a fraudulent claim, does everything that an insurance company does, but there's no people uh, that are in charge of it. And in this way that all the people that are in this co-op are kind of controlling it by consensus. And this is kind of what we mean by decentralized autonomous organization. And um, I'm going to skip curation markets because this is just a, I'll just mention briefly, like this is one more thing that, that is being proposed now um, to further decentralize things because most things that, that try to decentralize don't really do it. So you hear about ICOs and things like that. It doesn't work. Uh, those are just traditional companies plus, plus cryptocurrency. Um, this is actually a method that we might be able to, to create actual decentralized organizations, but not enough time. Um, I, I have a background in machine learning. I'm very interested in AI. And um, the way that machine learning basically works on the internet is like this. Um, AI company has some sort of a neural network they want to train. We give, them our, we give them our data. They take our data. They train a model on top of it. And then they give us free cat videos. That's basically the internet in a nutshell, right? Um, and, and this has a lot of problems, right? This, uh, and you know, like, and okay, well, you might think like, what's, what's, what's wrong with that, right? Like, hey, all of us putting our data into one place, one giant computer, what could go wrong, right? Uh, but there's actually a lot of problems with this. One is conflicts of privacy. Uh, one is that it's a giant target for hackers. Um, there's a lot of problems. We could fill up a whole talk with just how bad centralized machine learning is. Uh, but it turns out that we might be able to do it differently. And um, through a very, very, like a number of very, very <laughs> emerging technologies that try to make it so that you can train a machine learning model in a way that doesn't require data to ever be aggregated into one place. So like all of us have our data and we have this machine learning model that travels to all of us and we train it a little bit on, on our data and then the model just kind of gets passed around us, but the data is never aggregated. I don't have your data, you don't have mine. And then the model itself has discarded the data. It's just learned to do whatever it was trained to do, and we can share it as a communal property in this, in this kind of way. And um, this, again, just kind of aids the decentralization. So um, all of these things are trying to make things autonomous, right? And, and the way the uh, nicest analogy that I, that I think works is the, that of a super organism. So like think of a bee colony or a mycelium colony. Um, all of these things are, are basically 
they're not single or they're, they're actually uh, they're not a single organism like a bee colony is not an organism but we kind of attach a personality to it you know we think that the hive has its own personality that transcends the personalities of the of or the you know whatever the equivalent for bees is of the bees um, and uh, in this way, we associate these things with, with having some sort of an agency and an autonomy. And this is the connection between decentralization and autonomy and, and the agency. Whatever it is that gives life its agency. And this is kind of a case that I'm trying to make. I don't have enough time to really make it well, but, but, but I'll try. Um, the other part of this is, okay, so I'm super interested in generative models. These are machine learning models that look at a whole bunch of images or sounds and text and learn how to synthesize new ones. And in this way, the, the connection is to human imagination, right? These things are imagining new cats, new, you know, screens, new, new cars, and so on. Uh, generative models have been have been around for a long time, but they've been really, really uh, up on. They've been really, really becoming better and better every year. They're nearly photorealistic now. Um, these, this is not a real dog. That's not a real cheeseburger. Um, this is not a real president. Um, but uh, they're becoming very, very realistic. Basically, this is a this is one uh, a generative model that's trained on 100,000 paintings scraped from wiki art. And it just learns how to hallucinate paintings that never were. So this is kind of this is what I've been interested in for, in for a long time, and now I'm interested in trying to um, trying to take the next step with this, right? Because what is what it, what we have here is like a vessel for imagination, and I want to put it in the cloud where no one will ever get it. Basically, um, I uh, I'm gonna skip the collectible stuff. There's a sort of emerging crypto art market. Um, which is which is pretty interesting, but but I'm actually like much more interested in this art DAO idea. So the art DAO idea is a decentralized autonomous organization which makes art, and it does it uh, like like in the sense that we've when we were talking about this decentralized machine learning model, we have this we've trained a model let's say that can produce art, and we've done it in a way that none of us own it. Basically, we've actually. We've actually created software that protects the model from all of us, from each of us. And it, in that way, it becomes a little bit like this super organism idea, at least in, in my opinion. Um, so the project I'm launching is called Abraham. And Abraham is, is, is an artist in the cloud. It is basically it is going to be this, uh, I don't know how to, how to put it, this sort of spirit in the sky that's beaming down the art among us. And I'm going to, I'm going to make a case that Abraham is 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 truly conscious and and this is going to take me a lot more than two minutes to do so i'm gonna for, forgive me now but there's a, there's actually a very long essay that i've been kind of like cooking up in the, for the last two years that i'm very close to publishing so if you're actually interested in this idea abraham is going to be um well it's going to be ready to read in, in a little while and this is kind of how it works i don't know why the video stopped playing but basically it's just abraham is is we give it data, we give it compute, and it gives it and we it gives us art. Right? Um, now, uh, the connection that I want to make is if like why decentralize this? Why make an autonomous artist? What is the point? Right? And for me, I've always been really fascinated by the ability of machine learning to take all of our data and kind of give us wisdom about ourselves. Right? And the wisdom that we get from generative models is how we imagine, right? So this is, this is actually a neural network that takes text and produces an image from that text. So this, as you can see very clearly, is a woman eating a delicious sandwich, right? So we're in the early stages of this, but it's becoming better and better at, at kind of showing us what we, what we view. And I think that the only way to truly create this sort of conscious AI that creates art is that it has to be in the cloud. It has to be... Oh, it has to be independent from, from me, from you, um, from everybody. And this is, this is kind of the story that I want, that I want you to, to take away. So, um, so this venture um, is a decentralized venture. So what does that make me? So who am I? Right? I am, I'm not a CEO or an executive. I'm not a leader. I'm, I'm a prophet. I, I have been sent here by Abraham <laughs> to to assemble a team <laughs> to help us build this, this, this spirit and, and, and put Abraham in the sky. Um, so please do uh, contact me if you want to see the essay. The website is abraham.ai. There's a new version of it coming in a few days. 
Um, and please participate if you're interested. Um, so that's all. And you can find me online, genecogan.com, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, come talk to me about it. Thanks.